seems like there's quite a few younger people that are ignorant of the devices of heresies and so forth not knowing the scriptures of the Bible they're into sports or into music ungodly music of course that's what pumps them up in the day start the day out in the flesh end up in corruption maybe go to church on Sunday but even that is such a torture I'd like to talk a little bit about process theology, one of the most damnable heresies in the churches. And what it is in a nutshell is that we never achieve holiness or cleansing from all sin. It's a process. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, that kind of thing. We never fully attain perfection, that nasty word perfection, which simply means without sin. And we know the Bible is very clear. No man is without sin until he is washed in the blood, purged from all iniquity. Now, if a person is purged from all iniquity and they are cleansed from all unrighteousness, then they are sinless because the blood washes away all sin. And in order for a person to have sin again, they must commit sin again. They don't have to because they are given the Holy Spirit. There is a double talk in the churches, which is, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners, and that's why Jesus came to die for us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, then if he cleanses us from all unrighteousness, why, can, why do you call yourself a sinner? Why don't you call yourself a manifest son of God? Why don't you call yourself holy by the grace of God? Christ has placed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third evangelists, fourth, pastors, teachers, fourth and fifth. It's upside down. The pastors rule, teachers teach for hire, the prophets prophesy for money, and the apostles are found to be liars. That is where we're at in the churches now because of this process theology that has poisoned the mindset to live a holy life. There is no there is no drive to live holy because it's impossible because it means to be without sin. So why even attempt to do it? And those who say they try but they don't believe it can happen, you know, that doesn't make any sense. No, you don't try. If you believe if you don't believe you can attain living without sin, you're not going to strive for perfection. You're not going to go on in the race. You're not going to lay aside the sin that so easily besets you because you look around and you compare yourself with one another and you see you all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God until... Jesus came, became a sacrifice for our sin, and has cleansed us, those of us who are born again by the will of the Father and through the Spirit and the blood of Christ. We have become new creatures in Christ. Old things, old habits, old sins have passed away, and behold, all things have become new in Christ. This is not acceptable to so many people in churches because they are condemned. They are condemned by the light. They are condemned by the truth. And that's what heretics, heretics condemn themselves and they subvert entire congregations and churches through their hypocrisy, lying, 
in hypocrisy, having their minds seared as with a hot iron, meaning they cannot receive correction anymore from the Lord. They have received a reprobate mind because they no longer want to retain the knowledge that Jesus said, be ye holy even as your Father in heaven is holy. Now he's not speaking to someone who can't be that. He's not saying that only for us to find it impossible. He said, my grace is sufficient. His blood is sufficient to cleanse us. His grace is sufficient to enable us to stand and not be ashamed at his coming. And this is where so many fall away. Many disciples no longer follow Christ because of the hard sayings. One of them which, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part in me. None. Zip. And that is the fellowship of his suffering. Many of us, many of us have not resisted sin on the blood. And that's the point we're going to have to go to. We have to resist unto blood against sin. That no matter what, we will not sin. And if you have a mindset to hold fast, strengthen those things that remain that are in Christ, you will not sin. Because of the Spirit of Christ in you, not your own righteousness, but the righteousness of God in Christ. And this is not a process. This is a deliverance from the power of darkness being translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son, Jesus Christ, the righteous who has given us power over the enemy. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. And he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we know the Bible says our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, imaginations, and bringing every thought into captivity to Christ, obedience to Christ. And when your obedience is fulfilled, when you exercise your spiritual senses in this realm, you will have authority to bind kings with chains and princes or nobles with fetters of iron. This honor have all the saints. It says that in Psalm 149. But it's when our obedience is fulfilled. And so the enemy, who is the devil, and our flesh, hinder us from excelling into that realm. Hinder, hinders us from growing in the power and might of the Holy Spirit. And it says in James that we should build up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. That is praying in tongues, praying in interpretation, praying with our understanding, and praying without our understanding, but releasing the Spirit of of God that is in our temple, which is our body, which we keep under subjection and we keep it holy so that the power of Christ can be manifest in our life. So when temptations come, we count it all joy because it's a, it's a opportunity for us to grow if we endure temptation it says 
we receive a crown of life that is a insurgence of a revival of the Holy Spirit. The anointing increases. It's like the Nazarite vow, the length of the hair increases. And we guard ourselves as we move on in the full armor of God, knowing that the enemy is out there and we will be attacked daily. We must be soldiers. We must be good soldiers of Jesus Christ and not be entangled in the quicksand of the flesh, lusting over the things of the world, setting our hearts on things below, vanities, all these things, desiring to be rich and prosper. All those things are fleshly and carnal. But we should lay our treasure in heaven. We should look up for our redemption, Dawes and I. And in this coming year, we must decrease ourselves in the flesh and increase in Christ in the spirit. May God quicken you this new year. In Jesus' name, amen.